And joining us now with an analysis of Ukrainian President Zelensky's speech to the Israeli Knesset is Dr. Boris Molozov from the Cummings Center for Russian and East European Studies at Tel Aviv University. Thank you for joining us. Hello. So Zelensky receiving quite a bit of backlash from members of the Knesset. Was he able to sway them in Ukraine's favor as was his hope? Uh, I'm not so sure. The question is that uh, we all understand what was his goal, because actually he expressed it quite openly. He, in general, wants all the civilized world to be the friends of Ukrainian people. And that's why he tried to use the most known shablons and patterns of the Israeli society, using the Holocaust symbols, the Babi Yar, famous known place, where the Jews were killed near Kiev and so on. And I mean, what were his intentions? What was he hoping to actually achieve with this speech? I mean, was it arms, as he mentioned, the Iron Dome, perhaps? I and mean, what, what was he hoping really to achieve? First, he wanted to get more of political support of Israel against Russia. Basically, he wanted Israel to join the coalition of the Western countries and the sanctions against Russia. Second, he wanted more help, and he said it very openly. He wanted our uh, anti-aircraft systems to be sold to Ukraine, which could be used against Russian troops and Russian airplanes. And any other possible help, and of course also the open doors for Ukrainian refugees to Israel. Now, I mean, Zelensky really criticizing Israel for not doing enough to help. I mean, will this speech have any effect, maybe even just a little effect, in changing the government's current policies towards Ukraine or towards Russia? I'm not so sure. First, actually, uh, Zelensky, this is not the first speech of Zelensky. This is not the last one. He spoke with Germany and the members of uh, German Reichstag. He spoke with the members of U U.S. Senate and so on. So the idea is that uh, he blames NATO as well for not enough support of Ukraine, for not, uh, let's say, giving them enough weapons and so on and so forth. But as a result, I don't think that he will get what he really wanted. Maybe a little bit in terms of refugees and um, let's say counseling of certain limitations, but not really more because Israel as uh, it is, has also to think about its own goals and its own security vis-a-vis -vis, uh, Russia. Because, as you know, we have Russia very close, not far from our borders. We have 250,000 Jews in Russia, and we also have to think about them as well. And also, I think that there is a certain difference between the uh, steps of our official government and the uh, Ministry of Foreign Affairs, and personally Bennett, and uh, the sympathy uh, really serious sympathy that exists in Israel towards Ukrainian people and their sufferings now during this war. Absolutely. And now, you know, Zelensky perhaps realizing uh, his speech did not come across too well to members of Knesset, releasing uh, the video. But has the speech perhaps had the opposite effect? I mean, has it harmed Israel-Ukraine relations in the short term or perhaps in the long term? And, you know, was his backtracking perhaps too little too late. I don't think that it will harm Israeli-Ukrainian relations. Uh, first, because everybody understands in what conditions he was speaking. He is sitting in bunker and, okay, the country is in a stage of war and he tries to do what he thinks is best for the Ukraine today. So there was no, let's say, bad feelings. But, of course, certain facts that he mentioned uh, were not very, uh, I would say, correct uh, in understanding of Israelis. For instance, uh, with all the sympathy to Ukraine, we can't compare uh, the Holocaust during the Second World War and today's activity of the Russian army. 
as far as I know and as far as it was ever presented, I don't think that the goal of Russia was just killing of Ukrainians as it is. Uh, like it was during the Second World War with Jews, when they were killed just because they were Jews. Uh, Putin has his own goals in Ukraine. Mainly these goals are political, strategic. He, wants to, he wanted to change the government there. He wanted Ukraine not to be the member of NATO. He wanted it not to be the member of any military alliance in Europe. But I don't think that he had in mind to kill Ukrainians. All right, Dr. Bor Sorry. Boris Morozov, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us today. ILTV Plus, your news from Israel and more 24-7. Start your free trial today. Subscribe at ILTV.TV and watch from any device.